85 years ago, the writer Oscar Wilde said, never trust a woman who tells her real age. A woman who would tell that would tell anything. Well, but <laughs> some would say by that standard, women are pretty trustworthy. But there are women, many of them, I think, who never have subscribed to that philosophy, including famed singer Hildegard, who is doing what she's always done even better at the admitted age of 73. And in a moment, we're going to share her views on life and times, and we'll hear a couple of uh, the songs that she's made famous. A woman who remains incomparable, the incomparable Hildegard. <laughs> I gotta put this on you, you know? Because this is a different mic from what you're gonna use when you go over to the they're, they're your people. Right. Good to have you here. Good to be with you, Hugh. You don't have gloves on. Oh. There they are. Uh-uh. I always carry them. <laughs> See, I don't them, wear them in the daytime. You tricked me. At night. <laughs> That's true, because she's famous for wearing wearing sure. gloves. What's the reason for that? Why did? Oh, I don't know. It's, uh, should I put them on? Why don't I you put them? Oh, yeah. I'll feel yeah. more like it. Yeah. I'll believe I it. I'll the, believe it's you then. <laughs> <laughs> I can play the piano better with the gloves than without. <laughs> I'm astonished at that. I think that'd get in your way when you. Yeah. But no, it, I know no. it doesn't. No, it, it gives me a, a nicer touch somehow. Because yeah. yeah. the skin against ivory sometimes sticks. Really? Yeah, yeah and the gloves, I think yeah, it slipped, it might slip. Well, guys, so, so that's heaven just knows in case you, the people... <laughs> you play the piano very well as well as, well as singing you. very well. Thank and you you had brought strong. a book out in, uh, I think you wrote it in 1962. 62, yes. And I was looking at it again because there's a picture of you and, and me in the in the book. Right. And we were gathered together with a bunch of bunch of people. And we're it was the called bunch. Over yeah. 50, So What? Yes. What impelled you to write that book at a time when I think most uh, perform. If you'd told people you were 32 at the time, they would have believed it. <laughs> oh, why did you? Why did you want to write? Well, that? I thought the title was very good. It was about time people would be proud of the t of their age, because there was nothing wrong with being over 50. Um, let me see, that was in 1962. 63, so, I guess the book was published. Yeah, but, yeah, 62. Right. But at any rate, um, you see, Hugh, I was every year. By the newspapers always publish how old I am. And that started way when I was 37, when I was on the cover of Life magazine, and I was not very happy about it. But I thought, all right, I might as well admit it, so I'm 37. And that was, you know, it just hit me out so hard. And then ever, a after that, but then it doesn't then bother it, you every either. year it said she's 38, then she's 39, <laughs> up, 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 and now she's 73. But you didn't do I'm what some people do, and they kind of shave 10 years off here and there, you know, and, they, and, and no, you, you could have done that. it and got away with it, but you didn't. No, I don't know why I should, because I'm rather proud of it. Yeah. I really am. I have 53 years in show business, and... Uh, and I think it's uh, something very inspirational, it's not very, only to me, but I hope to other people. It certainly is. That's magnificent. Thank you. In the 17 years since you wrote that book, have, have, you, have your attitudes changed any, or have you accumulated any new uh, insights? Insights? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Maybe I've uh, um, I don't have to exercise like I used to because the book is about exercising and beauty care. That comes just naturally. I do that just because I'm a disciplined person. Mm -hmm. I take care of the skin because if you don't over if you don't dominate Mother Nature, she'll dominate you. Believe me, don't I know that? The minute I cheat a little bit, up I get a bulge. <laughs> is that right, ladies? Is it? Well, I. You, but you do it successfully. That's what's astonishing. Another thing I want to ask you, and I think this is a good question to ask you, because we deal often on our program with a lot of life's problems, mm -hmm. one of which is women in our society outnumber men. And the result is, for one reason or another, mostly being widows, there are a lot of, of women who are, who are lonely, who, have to, who are alone. Mm -hmm. uh, as a single woman, because you never married, and yet you have, you have a fulfilled life and you don't appear to be lonely. Do you have any advice for, for women who may find themselves alone at, at a period in life and, and think it is difficult to, mm. to cope with? It, I think it'd be interesting to hear what, how, how you make your life what it is. Well, Hugh, in the first place, I have a career. I've always um, I've been dedicated. I would have my head examined, but I've always loved the public. I've always loved my, my artistry, and, and I try to improve myself. I've studied voice again. I studied piano, and I keep with it. I keep going. And I have very optimistic thoughts. So I'm 73, 74, so what? I still go on what I have to do, but the other can... people may not have the incentive that I have. That's the sad part. Yeah, and they is, should uh... find things. They should volunteer. They should have hobbies. Mm -hmm. 
Don't you think, Hugh? Well, those, yes. are, those, those are some some tips I think would be worthwhile. You're mm -hmm. right, though. You bring up a point. It is much more difficult if if a person has run afoul of illness uh, and, and is in the throes of poverty. It's yes, much tougher to keep an optimistic attitude. My heart attitude. breaks so for those people, really. You are fortunate if you've got a talent and so forth. Yeah. But I was fascinated. You said you go, you continue to study, even even being on top. You you still study and. Uh, oh. do Yes, because some, you know, the voice uh, can get away with you a little bit, and I have a wonderful teacher who listens and watches it, and then I know how to breathe, and I know how to project, and, and she's been wonderful. And the piano work, of course, that takes t uh, practice, too. Tell me a little about this show, then. The, 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 oh, the I'm the so radio, excited radio, about the big broadcast of 44. You see, I had six radio shows before were you were born. Okay. <laughs> not likely. Well, you were three, not all right. Likely. So at any rate, I did. And the most popular one was the Raleigh Room. I had a lot of great guests like Tallulah Bankett and, and uh, Bert Lahr and, and uh, Irving Berlin and Fred Astaire. And they always were my guests, and it was a wonderful show. Well, Goober and Gross got into the idea to have, um, to see radio again, to see it. See. And that is why it's called the big broadcast of 1944. And do you know I have to think of 44? I really do. I'm not supposed to, I don't do songs of today, but only 44. You put yourself completely it, in the time. Yes, and do you know what I do, Hugh? This is very funny. At least I always get a laugh. <laughs> I say, oh yes, um, uh, people ask me how I got started my career. And so I say, now let me see, it's 1944, and 18 years ago, laugh, 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 I was, in, in 1926, laugh, 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 I was a student at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, see? And then I say I used to love to go to the Palace Theater every Saturday, and I saw a beautiful act, and I was enamored of it, and I it was called Jerry and her baby grands, and there was four white baby grands on the stage. And I went backstage and I asked for an audition, and Jerry herself heard me play, and the big song that got me through and got me into show business was 12th Street Rag. 12th Street Rag. Yes, yeah, and I do it. I do it, it. I do it in the show. You're listening from 1944 back. Yes. How wonderful. about doing good... good I, we oh. got a piano here. And you, you got a you piano there. Count on you. To, if you'll trade in that microphone, I'll introduce you, and we'd love to hear a medley of, of uh, some of the things yes, that we all course. know you for. I, now, wait. Where's you all set? All right. Thank you. Here, now, oh, and I'm not going to deliberately trip you. Well, here they are, these great songs which I first introduced and recorded, and they are still as great today as they've ever been. The last time I saw Paris, her heart was warm and gay. I heard the laughter of her heart in every street cafe. I dodged the same old taxi cabs that I had dodged for years. The chorus of their squeaky horns was music to my ears. For the last time I saw Paris, her heart was warm and gay. No matter how they change her, I'll remember her that way. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces. All day through in that small cafe, the park across the way, the children's carousel, the chestnut trees, and the wishing well. I'll be seeing you in every lovely summer's day. Light and gay. I'll always think of you that way. I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is new. I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. Biden.
den Schatten, sahen wir eine raus. Dass wir so lieb uns hatten, sah man gleich daraus. Und alle Leute sollen es sehen, dass wir bei der Laterne stehen. Wie einst, Lilly Marley, wie einst, Lilly Marley. Till I come back to you. Thank you. 